Hello there, welcome to Travels with Jordy. My name is Peter and I live here in Victoria, British Columbia on a classic wooden motor cruiser with my pup Jordy, all the while restoring it for some pretty ambitious cruising plans, which we'll let you know in the near future. Anyway, if that's the kind of thing that might be interesting to you, uh, why don't you consider sticking around and subscribing? We'd love to have you aboard. Cheers. It's something I've been planning to do for a long time, and in fact, it's something I promised the captain of Zephyrus some time ago. A little project, very simple, a knife holder. Basically, it, this piece of mahogany will be cut into two, and I'll arrange some rare earth magnets you can see here, so that knives will stick to it while it's placed on a vertical surface. Okay, so the magnets in question are um, little one inch rare earthers. I got them from Lee Valley here in Canada. Um, you notice I'm keeping them all far apart here on the bench because as they get too close to each other, they definitely attract each other. Okay, now these are pretty good magnets, but figuring out exactly how to arrange them and make this so that it's adequate for holding the knives is gonna take a little, little planning. So let's get on with that. Okay, so I can pull one of these magnets off here again. Um, this is one of the magnets. I have uh, 15 to play with and I want to make two eight inch long um, holders. So obviously I can't just put the magnet on the back of three quarters of an inch of mahogany because you won't even feel it. So what I'm doing, I'm going to use this shim as a test from about three eighths down to about oh, less than about an eighth. Um, so if I hold the magnet behind it there, well, I can feel it, but it certainly doesn't hold the knife. Slide halfway down. Ah, uh, still not there. And this is just a butter knife. Mind you, it's a heavy one. So if I slide to the very thinnest end of this shim, it will hold a butter knife. But I want to tell you, that might not hold a big um, carving knife on a boat. So I'm a little concerned because I really, I mean, these magnets are insanely strong. Let me put that one there, peel off a few more off of here. Um, this is just a washer that they sand with them. The only way to get these things apart is to slide them apart. Even then it's a bit difficult. So they have a red dot on them. So that must be the pole. However, I can't, oh, for crying out loud, I can't get these bloody things apart. Eh! There we go, I got one off. Okay, so there's the red dot. There's the red dot on that one. Now, I have a feeling that if I stack them, I might be able to get a little more oomph out of them. So let's keep the red dots together. Let's bring these together so they don't remove my finger. Very good. They are now super together. And let's try again at... Now that feels a little better. I like that. I like it a lot. If I put them in stacked, let's say in a routed trough, which I'm going to have to do, if I get them as close to the face as I dare, and that's routing, leaving just the thinnest little bit of veneer of wood on this side, and I stack two. If we find that it's not strong enough, in time I can take this off the bulkhead and toss another magnet on top, making it even stronger. The, the first magnet in the trough will be epoxied into the bottom of the trough. The, ow! The subsequent ones will just snap to it, no doubt. Okay, so that seems to work. Okay, that's a lot more analysis than you were probably interested in. Let's. Uh, Let's cut this in half, make some slots, do some woodwork. So in terms of the width of this, it's going to be half that length. Uh, that seems a bit wide to me, so I'm going to rip that down to about, oh, I don't know, two inches or so. After all, the one inch magnet just has to sit inside, but I have to leave enough room along the edges I can put some screws in from the back. So I'm just going to knock it down a little bit. Okay, glasses, well that goes without saying. How about this? Hey? All right. Right? I don't know. Can you hear me? So here's our piece. Chunk down into two eight inches and get routing. There we go. Okay, so how much of the back am I gonna route out? This washer represents the magnets. So we come in roughly an inch and um, I'm gonna epoxy them in the bottom of this trough. So I need a trough Basically that's shy by about half an inch each end and oh I don't know I want to give myself a fair amount of room so roughly an inch and an eighth inch and a quarter let's say in width so um, let's set that up. 
So basically I just have to set the bit up in such a way that I can drop it down, slide it along, lift it up, reset, drop it down, slide along, reset. The easiest way to do that would just be to create a stop on the fence. So I slid it along and when it's underneath, it stops against it. But I don't care if the trough is perfect underneath. So what I'm gonna do is simply just put a tiny little mark on the table there and there. And as I'm working my way back and forth, I know that's where I want to stop when I make the next pass. So um, the next thing is depth. I want to cut this quite deep, right? I want to leave that absolute minimum on the other side. The only thing is I don't want to do that in one pass because it's kind of hard on the bit. So I'm going to do a couple of steps to get there. Okay, so I'm going to take the last section out of the middle. It's just a tiny piece. I can do it with the full depth cut. So I'm just going to set the fence back far enough that it'll take that out. Right about there. Before I get too excited, I want to do a little bit of a test. Put a couple of magnets in here and see how well it holds a knife. So if I can, ow, I'm telling you, bloody magnets are death. Okay, there's a dust two. Put that right there. Hold that against that. Where's my trusty knife I'm testing this with? Here we go. And that feels pretty darn good. That's, that's great. I think that'll be fine. And if it needs more, it's nothing to slap another magnet on the back of that afterwards. Okay, so to glue the magnets into the trough, I'm going to use a pretty dull old uh, five minute epoxy. Pretty mundane stuff uh, because I want to set up fairly quickly because I want to keep going on this and uh, sand and clean up the other edge, get some oil on it. Okay, <laughs> now the trick is going to be, what's it going to be like? Oh, crikey. So I'm going to, you know, lay them down in the epoxy, lay the next one down. You see, they, they repel each other a little bit down there. Uh, so hopefully by the time they're all sitting in there and the epoxy is making everything sticky That'll work out pretty well. Um, I'm going to give each of these a quick wipe with acetone So what I've decided to do so that I can get at them relatively quickly is lay them all out down here on the bench far enough apart that they won't jump together if I uh, Bump them uh, again getting these off Yeah six Red dot down, red dot down, 10, 11, Say, folks, equal parts. All right, let's get some of this in here. Okay, let's call that good. Okay, so. This is where my fingers are bound to get sticky. First one, no trouble, right? Because it's not in any, I'm not up against anything. Second one. Ah, they're fighting each other, pushing away. Third one down here. Fourth one, fifth one. Ah, it's getting exciting. Come on, there you go. Oh damn, this one jumped. Oh, this is going to be... <laughs> yeah, now I'm in trouble. Well, that's a double. It's my first double. Uh, i hold these two down. Stay! No jumping. Come on, 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 come on! They just jumped on top of each other in here. Hmm. <laughs> sticky, sticky, sticky mess. I gotta get these apart. Fortunately, the epoxy is starting to kick, 
So it'll hold things for me a little bit. Let's slap these in. I have five. Let's make one side complete. What the heck? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So this is good. What I got to do is make sure I get the epoxy off those five um, before it sets so that I can stick more magnets to them successfully after at least some of it. And it's, oh boy, it's kicking hard now. Well, this has been a fun adventure. Holy crikey. Okay, all right, well, we'll let these set up. Okay, so these two are looking pretty good. Just a piece of wood from the front, right? We're going to toss some more uh, magnets in these knife holders. Uh, if you recall, one of these has 10 magnets, um, five stacks of two, and I only had 15 magnets before, so this one only has one five stack of one. So I only bought five more magnets because they're ridiculously expensive. They've gone up to about seven dollars a piece. So five more of these, yeah, these are turning into expensive knife holders. Anyway, let's get these in and get them installed in MV Zephyrus. Okay, so to open these things up, these things are like a little nasty bomb because they are pretty scary to get apart. So, there we go. There's our five magnets, red dot on top. Uh, these are the ones that only have one. Okay, so, wow. Okay, this should get easier with each one because as the stack gets smaller, the magnetism is a little less powerful. And the last one, there we go, there we go. So now we have two finished. Um, they've had one coat of oil, we'll put a little more oil on them after and uh, get them up, cool. Okay, so here we are aboard Zephyrus, ready to put um, these magnetic knife holders up. And this one's gonna go just about there. So uh, let's get to it. I'm gonna have to uh, drill from this side once I know where to do it, and then screw from the back side into the little shoulder of wood that's still on here. There's no way to really drill a pilot hole through because there isn't enough room in this little shelf. So I'll just stick the threads into this wood by about a quarter inch and that shouldn't split it. All right, let's get some stuff out of the way. Wine glasses, etc. I'll put this in roughly the position it's gonna be, put a clamp on it. Oop, I can't square to that because it's got that little bump on it. Or Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, and this will give me a guide when I remove the knife holder where I can put some screws. Right there and right there. Okay, marks roughly where I'm confident to put the screws, about there. And we're done with having the temporary installation. Okay. So, drill some holes. Okay. Now what I have to do to get them counter sunk a little bit on the inside for the screws is just take a counter bore and get in there and do it by hand. Not the hardest part of this. Okay. So I'm gonna put this back on with the clamp just so it holds it in place and make sure I have the depth exactly as I want it. Right about there. Okay, again, let's confirm square. Beautiful. And now, I can take a little stubby screwdriver, reach in through here, and screw it on. Piece of cake, really. All right, with the two screws at the back pulled home, I can take the clamp off again. That'll stay where it is. Let's take the tape off, too, just in case it was underneath a little bit, but it wasn't. It seemed fine. No, nope, looks good. And we'll drive home the last two screws up front. And it's on! Beauty! Get that little damp wipe out of there. Wine glasses. It's as if I was never here. Except, we now have
knife holder. Excellent. Well, I'm really pleased with that, and I'm pretty sure so will be the owner of Zephyrus. And we'll jump right back, and there's the other one I put on a little bit earlier. And uh, I think that works out really well. I'll take these off, put a little more oil on them, and then some of the uh, wipe-on poly just to make sure they're nicely sealed. Job well done. Okay, so late night munchies, everyone gets them, everyone needs to satisfy them. It's going to be bananas tonight. How often is it bananas? Well, it's bananas when it's butter fried, rum flambéed over vanilla bean ice cream. That's going to be awesome. So we've got some nice bananas here. We've got some butter, lots, cinnamon, maple syrup, and some crockin rum. And why crockin? Because we're not fooling around. Okay, let's get busy. This is going to be a taste treat sensation. Okay, this is so quick and easy. It's absolutely foolproof. Let's get the burner going here, get it on hot. Let's get a good schwack of butter melting away in here. No, more, more, even more. That's good, that's good. No, let's have a little more, because after all, it's sauce too, right? Okay, good. And we're gonna get a banana. So I don't even know where I came up with this. I know it's not original to me. Everyone's made flambéed bananas. Pretty straightforward stuff, but so tasty. So midnight snack, yummy. Okay, we're gonna get this actually start to get a little hot before we worry about it too much. Let's get that frying a little bit. I wanna see some sizzle. The beautiful thing about butter is that there's moisture in it. So as it gets hot, the water in it starts to bubble away and you get that lovely foaming, buttery, bubbly goodness. Oh, so yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay, so this is super easy. Basically just slice your banana into lots of quarter inch or whatever thickness really suits you. The last couple of slices, you're never gonna get right. It's whatever it is. Okay, oh yeah. Okay, so what we're doing now, we are butter frying bananas. Now obviously these are gonna get soft in a hurry. Soft and soggy. So you wanna move pretty quick here. Keep the temperature up. Oh, see that butter sizzling away? Oh gosh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna flip these over. Now, obviously, we're not going to flip them very reliably. Some will flip, some won't flip. Doesn't really matter. We're just getting them going here. Okay, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about the butter or are you thinking about the cracking? Okay, so there's lots of butter in there. The reason there's lots of butter, besides the fact that I just like lots of butter, is that it's also the base for the sauce, which is going to be basically butter, cinnamon, and maple syrup. Yeah, there'll be rum in there in a bit, but mostly butter, cinnamon, and maple syrup. Oh yeah. Okay, now they're starting to get nice and brown now. I like that. It's got the right look to it. Let's see if we can get a couple more of these flipped. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Don't want them too mushy, but we want them a little bit browned and crispy. Just a dusting of cinnamon, and I mean just a dusting. That's good. <laughs> Maybe that's slightly more than a dusting. And as much maple syrup as you can justify it. In this case, that's lots. There you go. Good. Okay, now this is going to caramelize. This is going to turn into a sticky, yummy, buttery, oh, yummy mess here. This is excellent. We've got to move fast here. Okay, pretty soon we're going to do a little flambe with the crack and rum. Let's get going on that. Okay, that's getting nice and sticky. Time for some rum on that. And don't be too short on this. Get a reasonable amount in there. Okay, we're going to light that up. There she goes. Yes, sir. How about we do that again? A little more of that. There we go, that's what we like. Okay. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. Okay, now for one of the most important parts. Vanilla bean ice cream from haagen -Dazs. Do not skimp. I'm telling you, you need real haagen -Dazs and you need real vanilla bean. Nothing else comes close. Okay, that goes off. Bring this up here so you can see what's going on. And oh, these yummy, fried, rummy, excellent. Okay, that is heavenly. 
Mmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Mmm. I can sleep now. Good night. And welcome to this week's Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week. This week, uh, another BC, this time from Vancouver Microbrewery, uh, Steel and Oak. And uh, some of you may remember I was in Vancouver a couple of weeks ago and I went to the Steel and Oak Brewery and went to the tasting room with some fantastic stuff. I didn't see this. This is the Doppelbock and I have to read you something off of this. Um, I can't find out anything about this beer off the website. It doesn't appear on their website. It just sounded good because of this. Uh, here we go. Steel and Oak. Honey, best enjoyed while seated in a leather chair with your feet up on a rich mahogany coffee table. Well, we have mahogany and I can get my foot up on a bit of mahogany scrap right behind you there. Um, we'll have to do the best we can for this. So anyway, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I love any kind of doppel. should be really quite a nice beer. I have chilled the glass in anticipation of this being a fairly foamy pour. Let's see how this goes. Nice, easy pour. No trouble here at all. Had a really great time um, in the evening. I was at Steel and Oak. It's in New Westminster, really great part of town. It was just a fantastic place. Let's see if we can pour just a little bit ahead on there. You're seeing some carbonation come up through that. Isn't that lovely in the late sun? Just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous spirit. It smells great too. Oh, that is really yummy. Rich, as they say. My gosh. Oh, I gotta get my feet back up on the mahogany. So good. Mm. Man, I am going to enjoy that. Anyway, um, while I have a beer in my hand, I need to send out a shout out and a very great and grateful thank you to Sigurd Pascal, Devin McIntosh, and Patrick Miller, who are this week's new patrons. Thank you very, very much for uh, getting coming aboard and uh, helping us out with Travels with Jordy. Cheers. There's just a little bit more housekeeping for this week. Advertising. Some of you may have noticed that I've actually enabled monetization advertising on the first 50 videos. That means way, way, way back. I did that as an experiment because there's been some debate and some people have suggested that it's possible that YouTube punishes um, YouTube channels that don't monetize. In other words, you can see the point. If you're not going to monetize, YouTube doesn't make any money while they play your videos. I don't know if it's true or not. So I thought I'd take the risk of monetizing 50 very old videos and see if it had any effect. I'm hoping it doesn't have any effect, we can just demonetize that and forget it ever happened. And that seems to be what's happening. It doesn't seem to have had any effect at all. So I may experiment with it just a little bit more, but the good news is there's no advantage to monetization. Certainly there's no money into it. I meant to give you a screen capture, but I think there's 30 cents in it so far. Um, if it ever, you know, turned in anything more, we could use that money to give away a few more t-shirts, but it's uh, certainly not going to be significant. So that explains that, because I had mentioned I didn't want to monetize. See you next week. Cheers.